Huh? Yes. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I grew up in, in, a, in a small rural post office back in the 1950s. And at that time, we had the only phone in the parish. And all social calls and emergency calls were all made at the post office. And of course, office hours were never uh, observed. And Friday night in particular was a very busy night when the older people came in to collect their old age pensions and the like of that. And on a particular Friday night when the little small kitchen where, 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 where everybody congregated was absolutely packed with people. And my brother and I were sitting on the steps of the stairs quietly amusing ourselves. And then we heard the, the front door opening and there was a little porch in the house and that was quite dark. And a man came in, a man called Danny came in out of the, out of the, out of the, out of the porch and he was, he was blinking uh, in, in the brightness of the light. He said, good night, Danny, they, they, they said in unison to his salutation. And um, sit down here, somebody said, if you can find a seat. And uh, he said, no, no, no. He said, I'm not going to sit down at all. He said, um, I want to make a phone call. Well, that statement brought instantaneous silence. A phone call. And they wondered what would warrant a phone call and the price of it. They didn't have long to wait. He said to my mother, Catherine, he said, could you make a phone call for me? He said to my cousin in Bantry. My old mother was supposed to go over to him there on Sunday for, 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 for a few weeks, holidays, but she's, she's not feeling well at the moment. Um, uh, she, she's, not feel, she's not feeling well at the moment, so she'll have to postpone and would you put me on and uh, or tell my cousin there that, that she won't be able to come. So she said, um, you, you can speak to him yourself, Danny. Oh God, no, he said, I could, never, I could never manage that contraption. He said, I could never manage that contraption. So anyway, she, she you know, it was the old phone and you twisted the handle and she had to book, she had to book the call and she knew the number already. And, the price the price, she had to give the whole data to the to the operator and then after it danny now was was quite was quite nervous at this stage and after a few minutes the phone rang and danny kind of jumped up and she had a few words with the person on the phone and then she said to she said to danny come on danny she said speak to him yourself she said he's on the phone oh my god he said i know he said i can't come on and the whole the whole people sitting around said, come on danny come on danny so he was in an awful quandary now he, 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 he was damned if he did, and he was damned if he didn't. So reluctantly, he picked up, he picked up the telephone, he kind of held it out and said, hello, hello, hello. He screamed into the phone. Take it easy, no, my mother was coaxing. She said, put it up to your ear, Danny, she said, and listen, and then you speak. And he said, hello, hello, hello. And then he put it up to his ear, and uh, he listened for a second. And he, he turned on, crash, Catherine, he said, I can hear Finn talking. That's all right now, she said, that's all right now, Danny. She said, put it up again now. And then he shouted again, Finn, Finn, is that you? And my brother and I were listening to this, you see, this was not a surprise in our host because we'd witnessed this kind of business several times before. But Finn was a new name to us. And my brother nudged me and he said, because our neighbor had a dog called Finn. And he said, he's talking to our neighbor's dog. So we started laughing and of course my father gave us one, one of his evil eyes and that shut us up but I could, I could see him smirking himself. And, Danny was bellowing on regardless of everything you said. He was roaring into the phone and one of them in there said, if we opened the door, he wouldn't need any phone. He could nearly be heard in Bantry. So anyway, he eventually, he eventually handed back the phone to my mother in, in, and, and there was absolutely, he was absolutely ringing wet with sweat. And she had a quiet word with, with, with Finn on the other side to make sure he'd got the message. And Danny came in and he was, he was pulling at his shirt. He said, oh my God, he said, just roasting in here. He said, I know how you stick to hate. He said, I must go out for fresh air after that. And he was absolutely elated. He was elated now after, after, the, after the, the achievement of speaking on the telephone. And he put, his, he put his hand on the knob of the door to go out. And he said, I must get some fresh air here. Fresh air, he said, I, 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 I'm choking, he said, with the heat. And I'm sweating, he said, I'm sweating from it. And just as he was going out, another fellow quickly said, Sweating or not, but he said, pay your sixpence. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>